Hello again, humans. It is I, Jim the Ape. And I recently held a poll on my Twitter page that asked, which moron should I make a response video to first? And the options were pretentious twat waffle or androgynous imp. And in the 24 hours that this poll was active, only one person voted. So the winner, by a 100% to 0% landslide, is the pretentious twat waffle. <laughs> so today I'm going to be responding to a video that has received some attention as of late as it addresses YouTubers, specifically ones that criticize feminism and use an avatar. So it's not like it's directed at me. I really am a 600 pound talking gorilla. Still, I think these discussions are worth having and there are some points in this video worth responding to. Also, a disclaimer before we start. He released a follow-up video where he revised some of his points, albeit slightly and not all of them. I'll link that video in the description so you can check it out and decide for yourself if it invalidates any of the points I'm about to make or if this response video is still relevant. That being said, let's get started. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Top Hats and Brain Drain, the show on Toppers and Champagne that deals with the, well, kinda hardcore free-to-play game that we like to call real life. Today I also come to you um, with a very strange camera perspective, but I'm feeling all artsy and I'm still trying to figure out my camera. I hope you like it. I don't. You're a pretentious twat waffle, and the existence of capitalism as well as something called cost of living proves that life is anything but free to play. But that's all pedantic and pointless criticisms on my part. Consider it a conversational icebreaker, an appetizer for this little back and forth banter I'm about to create through the magic of video editing. Sit tight, folks. The main course will be out in just a minute. So today I had thoughts. I had thoughts about YouTubers. I had thoughts about anti SJW YouTubers. It's OK. We've all done it. We've all thought about what Sargon looks like naked, am I right? I mean, you have to wonder if the beard matches the bushes, or if he's a just-for-men kind of guy. And why they aren't just as cool as SJW YouTubers. <laughs> Calm down, human. I'm not going to throw my feces at you. The fact that you think I would is a symptom of ape culture perpetuated by anti-ape propaganda. And SJW YouTubers aren't cool. They just think they are with their brightly colored hair and their hipster glasses, which is ironically their way of being nonconformist, despite them all looking the fucking same. In reality though, they're the second lamest thing in the universe, right behind Christian memes. Shots fired. <laughs> yes, I know. I know, but it's true. Hear me out. So we have YouTubers like Rebecca Watson or Feminist Frequency or... Jonathan McIntosh, or even, dare I say it, Jamin Warren, who all show their faces. Their ideas may be redonkulous and hateful and racist and sexist, but they show their faces and they put a face to where their money is. Anita Sarkeesian can't help but put her face where her money is because, one, she's a narcissist, and two, there are way too many stupid people out there who will give her money for a new project even after she completely and utterly failed to produce the majority of the videos promised in the first one. Not only that, but feminists have nothing to fear by coming out and speaking their minds freely because despite what they and their victim complexes would have you think, feminism is the fucking establishment. It's in universities, it's in the government, it's in the law, and it even has an unfortunately high probability of getting into the White House later this year. You can't get more establishment than that. And I dare say that in George Orwell's 1984, not a single person was afraid to show their face when saying that they loved Big Brother. They were afraid of what would happen to them if they said otherwise. In case you haven't read the book, not only would they be killed, but every record of them ever having existed would be erased. It's an extreme analogy, but I think you get my point. 
quite literally. These people have a lot of money. <laughs> so on, on our side, we have, well, we have people like Sargon, who, whilst he does not show his face very often, he at least is not um, opposed to showing it. And we have seen it quite a lot of times. But then we have YouTubers like Bering or like his um, girlfriend, wife or whatever. Oi, her name is Sugar Tits. You cunt. Oh, bearing. Sorry, mate. I don't know if you're watching this, but my Aussie accent is shit ass. And Louis Laval and countless other YouTubers who are basically just um, avatars. Avatars, still pictures on a screen with an anonymous voice. Okay, now might be a good time to list the myriad of reasons one might have for using an avatar. At least the ones I can think of. I might miss a few because, after all, I wouldn't know from experience. Anyway, the first reason is one that you'll mention later in the video, but since I'm listing them off, it's for protection against doxing, swatting, and being fired. Unfortunately, the people we're criticizing have a lot of pull with the establishment, as I've mentioned before, because they're the kind of people that companies will go out of their way to cater to, even if it doesn't make sense. They can, in some cases, get a person fired simply by complaining that they're offended. In Clementine Ford's case, it was because of a single four-letter monosyllabic word. And the less I say about the horrifying practice of swatting and how dangerous it can be, the better. Just look it up if you need a refresher. Another reason is because despite YouTube being a platform where anyone can become famous, not everyone is a narcissist, and some people prefer to leave the image to some kind of cartoon or animated character. This was something that Armored Skeptic talked about being one of his reasons for using an avatar. Another one that ties in with the skeptic is that sometimes a person isn't necessarily making YouTube videos as themselves, but as characters that may hold the same views as the person behind them, or maybe they don't, and it's satire. Either way, that kind of character exists for entertainment purposes and can allow for specific kinds of jokes to be worked into their videos. Jokes that wouldn't make sense if they were just on camera talking. When you see an animated film or TV show, you don't expect to see the voice actors in the recording booth saying their lines, do you? Of course not. And the same principle applies on YouTube. And last, but certainly not least is... Fuck you, I don't need a reason. Yes, people can simply choose not to show their faces on camera and not have to explain themselves to self-aggrandizing douche canoes such as yourself. And uh, whilst I can understand um, the need to do other things instead of YouTubing, I also ask myself, why is it that so many YouTubers don't spend the time to set up a camera and to show their beautiful faces to the public to um, spout their opinions. Because not everyone is as full of themselves as you are, you narcissistic cunt muffin. So why can SRWs do it, but not us? A more serious answer to that question can be found in the previous explanations I gave about feminism being the establishment and about the horrible things they can get away with doing to people who aren't careful about how they choose to go against it. Also, some YouTubers can have their videos or their channels taken down by false DMCA, and they may not have the resources to legally defend themselves if they're a smaller channel, just starting out, and maybe don't have much money for a lawyer. That might not have anything to do with using an avatar or appearing on camera, but I just thought I would point that out. And I've come to a conclusion, or rather, I have a hunch. And that hunch is that y'all are afraid of doxing. There it is. See, I told you you'd mention it. By the way, I can't stand the word y'all for some reason. I guess it's like how some people hate the word moist, but at least moist is an actual word. Anyway, no, not all people who use avatars are afraid. I refer you to my previous list of possible motives. Not all of them require fear as a necessary component. And it wouldn't matter if they were all afraid, because fear is a natural response to perceived threats, and it's subjective. But more importantly, it wouldn't matter because anonymity is just as much a right as freedom of speech is. And I would argue that it's a necessary component of it. And you shouldn't be. 
because it makes us look like fucking cowards. Says the man who is self-employed and does YouTube full-time, and therefore doesn't have a quote-unquote real job to lose. Yeah, in your follow-up video you say you got there by taking risks. Well, you know what? Not everyone is willing to lose everything they have on the off chance that it might get them free from the chains of wage slavery. For some people, the stakes are too high and the chances of success are too small for them to take that risk. And sometimes it's better not to, as the odds can be quite heavily stacked against you. Don't believe me? Just go to any casino. The point is, in order for there to be a one in a million success story, there has to be 999,999 failures. And some people would rather protect what they already have than take a big chance and risk being one of those failures. Sure, everyone loves an underdog story, but sometimes you just have to be fucking realistic. And uh, if it's just laziness, well then get to it. Get a fucking camera. Oh, believe me, I know all about laziness. I wanted to do a video debunking the wage gap myth, but I've been too fucking lazy to do the research. But pretty much everyone has some kind of camera nowadays, at least on their phone, although some of them can't figure out how much better it looks when they simply film horizontally instead of vertically, or they just don't care. Either way, I don't think it's laziness, so next point. But I guess it's doxing. So many of you seemingly are afraid of what SJWs will do to you should they find out who, they, who you are. Like, they will tell your employer that you're a rapist or a murderer, or they will ruin your family, or, I don't know, throw Molotov cocktails <laughs> into your apartment. Okay, maybe not the last one, but, well, who knows. There are a plethora of ways in which feminists and SJWs will at least attempt to ruin your life if they decide that they hate you enough. False rape accusations are an extreme example, though they don't necessarily have to report to the police. They can drop that metaphorical nuke on some fucking chat forum somewhere, or on a Tumblr blog, and then guess what happens when a prospective employer googles your name. They can also contact your employer directly and try to get you fired, like laughing bitch, Jenny McDerp cunt, and bewildered pitiful fucking excuse for an ape tried to do to Thunderfoot. They can press charges of harassment and have you banned from using the internet for three years while you await trial, like Stephanie Guthrie did to Gregory Allen Elliott. By the way, he was fired as well. They can file false DMCA's against your videos, making money off of your content and leeching off of YouTube's broken system. They can dox you, harass you, threaten you, and most terrifyingly SWAT you. Consider for a moment what it would be like going about your daily business at home when suddenly cops burst down your door and you're staring down the barrels of multiple automatic weapons pointed square at your head. You could be killed or hurt. Your family members could be killed or hurt. And perhaps most sickeningly of all to an ape like myself, cops have been known to kill family pets even if they aren't a threat. And if you want to shame people for being afraid of that, then you are a despicable piece of shit who lacks even the smallest ounce of empathy and deserves none in return. Or maybe you just hadn't thought about it that way, and this would make you rethink your position. Who knows? And these concerns are valid. Oh, I guess you don't think that then. Well, I'm still not gonna let a rant like that one go to waste now, am I? What kind of YouTuber would I be if I just deleted that last bit and, oh, god damn it, this is gonna make me look like an idiot. But, but, you seemingly feel strong enough about this topic, this whole social justice or anti-social justice movement topic, um, that you deemed it necessary to start a YouTube channel and to talk about these matters. So, you are kind of engaged. One could say that you're kind of the vocal leaders of our anti-SJW movement, if we can even call it that. I don't consider myself a leader. 
nor would I want to be one if I gained a bigger following. I do, however, consider myself an entertainer. I like being able to express myself in such a way that entertains you humans, and to do it without being trained or commanded to do so like my more popular dancing monkey cousins. And it brings me great joy to be able to work in some of the actual facts I've learned throughout my life into my content in a fun way. That's why I enjoy making the poetry responses so much. Even though listening to feminist slam poetry literally gives me a headache, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for my art. And one thing that artists and entertainers have in common is that they do not wish to be leaders. They only wish to express themselves through their chosen medium. Or some such bullshit, I don't know. So why in the hell do you not find the courage to resist the urge to hide and to hide from consequences? I'm not sure what that sentence was, but I think what you mean is why do they hide, your word, not mine, behind an avatar? Well, I've explained that pretty well earlier in this video, I think. I just thought I'd point out how jumbled that question sounded to me. Um, why don't you just show your fucking face and your fucking name? Why does Batman wear a cowl instead of going around and saying, I'm Bruce Wayne, when he fights crime? Why do any superhero vigilantes wear masks and hide their identities? It's because what they're fighting against is dangerous, and they could be targeted when they're not fighting crime, if they just did so without any identity concealment. Their loved ones could be targeted as well. I'm not saying I'm Batman, but do you really know I'm not? Nor am I saying that people opposed to feminism and SJWs are superheroes fighting crime. I'm just saying that when you're going up against a dangerous enemy, metaphorically speaking, that can hit you where you live, it's better to protect yourself by remaining anonymous. Because we need it. We need faces out there. We need faces out there that stoically stand against those who want to silence us. And by not showing your face and by not showing your name, you kinda make it happen. Dude, I think you just accidentally said that by not showing their face, they're making people showing their faces and standing against censorship happen. I don't think you meant to, but rewind it back. We need faces out there that stoically stand against those who want to silence us. And by not showing your face and by not showing your name, you kinda make it happen. Yep, you definitely just said that. Didn't catch that in editing, did ya? You're kind of helping them, not show, you know, but that's all, um, silence all dissent thing. Oh, unless you meant they're helping them silence dissent. In which case, you're still wrong, because face or no face, dissenting opinions are being spoken, not silenced. Which reminds me of another reason one might use an avatar. Because ideas and arguments stand on their own merits, and are more important than the person they happen to be coming from, you spastic, cretinous windbag. Um, before you now go, well, Top of the Champagne, I may see your face, but what is your real name? I've decided to come out with my real name too, because so many people knew it already anyway. My real name is Falco von Falkner. That sounds like a James Bond villain, which is appropriate because you look like one. Also, Amadeus, 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 oh, 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 Amadeus. And now for a brief message from my pet human. Hi, my name is James Dietrich, and I am Jim the Ape's pet human. Some people think I am Jim the Ape, because I named him after me, thinking he would be my pet and not the other way around. But that's ridiculous. We look nothing alike. Also, I'm a human, and he's a 600-pound talking silverback gorilla. Anyway, the moral of the story is, don't get a pet gorilla. They will enslave you, steal your money to pay for cartoon avatars for their YouTube channel, leech off your Wi-Fi, force you to make them dinner, be- Thank you for your contribution to my video, human. Now go make me a sandwich! And I live in Sydney, most of you know that too. Um, the one who inspired me to do that was Mundane Matt, um, who, well, kinda recently, 
uh, was threatened to be doxxed and he uh, I'm not being threatened by the way not at all and he decided to just uh, show his face and show his real name and he took all the power away from these people okay apparently some people commented on your video that he got swatted and somehow in your follow-up you came to the conclusion that that strengthened your argument? I don't really know, but I think Matt was in the very dangerous and potentially lethal situation of being swatted because his information was out there. Again, it's a risk versus reward assessment that each individual YouTuber must make for themselves. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but it was a harrowing experience that I'm guessing Matt found anything but mundane. And he won't be forgetting it anytime soon. That they had over him. And he has since declared that he has been feeling, well, not reborn, but um, at least good. He feels good being a real personality on YouTube and on the internet and not just some, you know, anonymous avatar. So why else should we use our faces and our names instead of anonymous avatars? We should use it because for those who sit on the fence, because as you know, most discussions are not to convince your opponent of your view, but to convince the fence sitters of your views. If they can't see the merits of the arguments and instead get hung up on not being able to watch the lips flap as said arguments are being made, then fuck them! They're superficial and stupid and they deserve to be wrong. And they will be as long as they lack the intellectual rigor to relate to the words being said rather than obsessing over who is saying them. And if I was a fence sitter, you'd have a sore ass. Sorry, I have to add some levity here and there. And I would watch a video of Rebecca Watson. Guys, don't do that. Don't watch Rebecca Watson's videos. They're really bad. Or of Anita Sarkeesian. Women who may have shitty opinions, but who stand proudly for what they say, even though they're crooks, we all know that. But they stand there proudly and they present themselves. Yes, bigots are often proud of their bigotry, and idiots are often proud of their idiocy. Especially when said bigotry, and or idiocy, is backed by the aforementioned establishment. The support of which brings no serious consequences whatsoever. Medieval monarchs did not fear what the peasants thought of them, as there were giant stone walls and armed knights between them, which protected the royalty and kept the poor starving peasants from ever entering the opulent palace. Opulent by that time period's standards, of course. By today's, they were shitholes. We have still images of bears and of 16th century Renaissance men. And apes! Don't forget about us. I love you, Louis Levau, but it's true. So, in order to, to not appear like we're just some fucking basement-dwelling loser nerds, which I'm sure most of you actually aren't, I know some are, but most actually aren't, why do not put a picture, a face to the name, a face to all these statements that you make, these strong statements? You know, for some people, the avatar picture that you've spent five minutes bitching about is the face that they have chosen to represent themselves and their ideas. Just because it's not their natural countenance doesn't mean their ideas are any more or any less accurate than that of the hideous land whales that are all too happy to get on camera and recite the dictionary definition of feminism. I feel like all your strong statements, y'all, you would, you would, it would be even more stronger if you just, you know, did it. Um, are they talking to me? And that's why you don't film in a public place where any asshole can just walk into frame, interrupt you, or otherwise ruin the flow of your video. Seriously, what's wrong with making your videos at home? Okay, I was just interrupted by some rowdies who really like my camera, but, well, they're gone now. <laughs> You're not funny. You're just a smug prick. Um, what was I? Yes, I think faces have power. I think identities have power, but not only power to dox, but also power to convey a message. Somebody who shows his face on a very controversial topic also portrays that he really, or she of course, we're not gonna exclude women here and not space whale kin either. Somebody who shows th their face. <laughs> oh my God, I've been indoctrinated. 
show, shows that they really care about the topic and are serious about it. Okay, bad jokes aside, the simple fact that someone chooses to make videos about a topic shows that they care about it and are serious about it. If they didn't, they wouldn't make the videos in the first place. As for stylistic choices and presentation, that's entirely up to them. They could be like you and worship their own face and all the punchable expressions it makes, or they could let their ideas speak louder than their appearance by simply not showing the latter. All right? All right. Oh, for fuck's sake, would you just go home the next time you want to make a video? It's much easier when you can control the environment around you to a reasonable degree. So yeah, go to your room! And I was interrupted again, but that's what you get for filming in a fucking public park. Told ya. I also wanted to say something about the fears of losing one's job, um, which I think is a driving factor for many of you to not use your real faces. It doesn't matter. Jobs don't matter. Do you really want to work for somebody who would fire you for having an opinion on the internet? In theory, no. But in practice, many people would rather not be homeless and not starve to death. So most are willing to dial back on their principles a bit instead of unnecessarily and perhaps quite literally dying upon the hill of their political views. You do? Well, I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't. Congratulations. You have an opinion on a hypothetical scenario. Again, you're self-employed, so you're not really in a position to understand the dependence that most people have on not pissing off their employer, who can then, to put it in simple terms, take all the monies away. But then again, my pet human is the one who works, and I just steal his money to pay my avatar artist, so... And if someone would fire me for having an opinion on the internet, you know they weren't my boss to begin with. Yeah, that's great for your next seminar of motivational self-help woo, but most people have supervisors at their jobs to make sure that the work gets done right and to make sure that they're earning what they're being paid. You wouldn't know anything about that because you're a colossal spank sponge who lucked out by not having to have a real job. Fuck knows how you managed to pull that one off. Um, there's many jobs out there, believe it or not, and most of you belief are libertarians so you should believe in the power to make the most of your life out of your life <laughs> uh, yes and therefore you should also believe in your own power to steer your life fucking hell if you get fired just become self-employed or get a better job or go into a different field to quote an old song that my pet human hears every single day at his job it's easier said than done but if you really st want to stand up, if you really feel that strongly about these issues, that SJWs are indeed destroying our society, or at least are a very big threat to our society, then it shouldn't matter. No social movement, no revolution or counter-revolution has won by hiding behind masks. He said, not knowing if that was true. Yeah, symbolism and anonymity can be powerful things. Just think of all the things that have been associated with the Guy Fox mask from V for Vendetta. Not all good things, necessarily, but it can certainly be an effective and evocative image to see a crowd of protesters all wearing that same mask. I may be wrong, but I don't want our movement to be one that hides between masks. Um, therefore, my question to all of my viewers right now is, what do you think about the uh, anonymous YouTuber? See preceding video. In short, I believe anonymity is a necessary companion to freedom of speech. And there are myriad reasons why one might use an avatar instead of their face. I, for one, can't listen to most of them anymore. Well, fuck off, then! And I, I love them. I really love them. I'm sorry. It's just not working for me anymore. I think we should see other people. But, but I can't shake that feeling that there could be so much more, and I can't shake that feeling that, that it's irrelevant what they say if they don't put a face to it. Fuck you! That statement suggests that some of my favorite YouTubers, such as Bering, Teal Deer, Thorium, Undoomed, Fiffin, and even my recently acquired friend Failure Accomplished are all invalidated because you're obsessed with knowing what they look like.
And it is exactly that kind of vain celebrity gossip culture bullshit that discourages intellectual rigor and turns politics into little more than a popularity contest at a dog and pony circus show. I may be strange on that matter, but that's how I feel. Oh, well in that case, I'll use a clip from one of my previous videos. Fuck your feelings. Fuck my feelings. Fuck everyone's feelings. Feelings don't matter. See, it's pointless to argue that you feel a certain way when you can't demonstrate objectively that there is any harm done by not showing one's face. So, either conduct a study yourself or find someone who did. You still won't be able to persuade everyone to show their face, but at least that would be something. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think they should show their faces or do you understand what they're doing and why they're doing it? And for those YouTubers, who I uh, called out. I don't like the term called out because it sounds so negative. I still very much enjoy what you do. Why do you do it? Do you think I'm full of shit? Or um, uh, did I get your reasons completely wrong? Is it in the end just laziness? No. I do not appear on video because for most humans, seeing an actual live gorilla who can talk would blow their fucking minds and distract from my points. Not to mention, the government would probably come for me and perform tests on me and figure out how I'm able to speak. So I started out using pictures of myself from my ape modeling days. It was an unfortunate time when humans exploited my sexiness for money. Then it came to my attention that a YouTuber by the name of Naked Ape was using a picture of me as his avatar. Not only that, but it was the exact same picture of me that I was using as my avatar. So rather than making a big deal out of it, I just stole my pet human's money and hired an animator to do a cartoon version of me to be my new avatar. That's why I do it. Because it is, if it's fear, let's talk about fear. Let's talk about fear and let's talk about what you can do with your life to end that fear. Not with your life, in your life. <laughs> I would love to have a discussion about that. I would like to have a discourse about that. I too would be open to live discussion and not just this pre-recorded and edited exchange we're having now. But you should know that there's something about you that just makes me think you're an unlikable puke-stained fuckstick. Maybe it's the smugness or the fact that you seem to be arguing that your narcissistic need to appear on camera somehow makes you superior to people who don't appear on camera. I don't know. That's just how I feel. And now, I thank you very much for watching. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, and I see you soon. Thank God that's over. I hope this video didn't turn out to be too long. I won't know until I edit it. I just had so much to say, and I didn't know how to structure it because this guy was just all over the place. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down, although I will probably just assume that you didn't like my pet human's stupid face. If you have more specific feedback, leave a comment down below. And if you like my content, subscribe to see more of it. That's gonna do it for me. I'll catch you next time. Stay great, apes. They will enslave you? Steal your money to pay for cartoon avatars for their YouTube channel? Leech off your Wi-Fi? Force you to make them dinner? Beat eggs at 8 in the morning when you're trying to sleep? It's horrible! I started a rant Which started the whole world laughing but I didn't see the facepalm was on me.